Good morning and welcome back to San Diego. Welcome back to the Pro Paddle League. This is day two of event three live from the Barnes Tennis Center in sunny California, in sunny San Diego, where we've got a lovely set of matches and set of uh, ties for you here in the PPL. We start you off with the LA Beats, the Los Angeles Beats, taking on the Toronto Polar Bears here at this beautiful place, the Barnes Tennis Center, and we welcome you along for the rides for the the entirety of the day my name is nicholas quarles Winifred, everyone thank you so much for joining us and uh, alongside me is the former number one the lefty the argentinian ceci right ceci buenos dias buenos dias nico good morning everyone nico what a day we have yesterday what a day full of action full of emotions and today we got another great menu for this Amazing week that we have started to enjoy here in San Diego. Yeah, we have three beautiful ties for you here at Center Court. But before we do any of that, let's have a look at what happened in yesterday's matches because there was a lot of action here in day one, in the debut day of the San Diego PPL event, this third event. Let's have a look at what happened yesterday because we had plenty of action throughout the entirety of the match day. First, we had, well, we we had, we had a lot of matches, didn't we? But we saw the Arkansas Matrix uh, in action. They won 3 0 in their. Uh, we uh, had uh, the Arkansas Matrix, like I said, 3 0 winners. We had the Toronto Polar Bears winning 3 0 against Miami and the Cancun Waves beating a 2 1 against uh, New York. Let's have a look at the recap from day one. This, uh, this was some of the stuff that we saw yesterday. It was the first day, so of course there were some kinks, there were some technical difficulties, like always. But uh, what a day it was, as always here in California. It was sunny, it was nice out, everything was going uh, swimmingly. Uh, the LA Beats that we see today, they had a rest day, but for the Flow Rider Goats, for example, they had a lovely time out. Martin Dineno made his debut, Yamatriai and Arantha Soro coming back coming back from a set down the flow rider goes winning 3-0 against the las vegas smash uh, we also saw the uh, the cancun waves like i said later in the evening we saw the arkansas matrix of course with a lovely touch there to uh, charlie moon who's battling against leukemia uh, and fede chingoto that man in your picture as well he made his debut yesterday in uh, sessi so uh, a lot of stuff that we saw a lot of debutants new here in the ppl formats for these fans in san diego to see see these are the results from yesterday. Like I said, the Flow Rider Goats taking care of the smash by three uh, games to nil. Same goes for Toronto, same goes for Arkansas, and Cancun waves in the New York Atlantics. The only one where we saw the uh, mixed double, the third tiebreaker match going uh, uh, here at the center court, the LA Beat and the San Diego Stingrays. The local team had their rest day. Here's what we will have today. The LA Beats starts against the Toronto Polar Bears, two teams that we haven't seen so far at center court as Toronto uh, played their match on uh, court two. The San Diego Steam Race in action after the Houston Vaults and the New York Atlantics are the two teams that have their rest day today. So a lot of stuff to uh, to ingest, a lot of stuff to look forward to. Miami Paddle Club, of course, we, we discussed it briefly yesterday. They uh, they are without Agustin Tapia, they are without Ari Sanchez, they are without uh, Jon Sant. So it will be a difficult one for them. This, uh, this, entire, uh, this entire event will be a bit more difficult. They won the first of course, the events, uh, of course. And uh, before, we start, before we start getting in all of that, we are going to talk about um, the format. Because this is different, of course, than Premier Paddle, than World Paddle Tour. So let's present the format, how this all works, the PPL. Here's a nice little video explaining all of it. The Pro Paddle League 2024 will be held in San Diego, California. And we'll have the following format. Ten teams were split into two groups of five teams. And each team will play every team in the group once. The tournament will last seven days, where the teams are guaranteed four matches during the first five days of competition in their round-robin pool play. Each team has one rest day. Each match includes a men's double, a women's double, and a mixed double. The format of the men's and women's doubles matches will be best of three sets with golden points and a super tiebreak to ten points in the third set. 
On the other hand, the mixed doubles will be played regardless of the result of the men's and women's doubles and will be played to one set with golden point and a super tiebreak to 10 at 6-6. The top two teams from each group advance to the semifinals. The winners of the semifinals will play in the final, and the losing teams will play for third and fourth place. That's it, that should explain it, Ceci. And uh, quickly, before we meet the players of the first match, uh, what do you make of yesterday, and is there any particular player that impressed you most? No, what I was my most impressed uh, by is uh, Dark Erkins uh, show how reliable they are as a team, no? because with Patti, Cata, Gonzalo, and also Mario del Castillo, they defeated a great team. And today they will be reinforced by Gonzalo Alfonso, who is joining Erkins uh, today. So I was surprised by their strength fully and um, also about the floor rider goats no with martin dineno they did a great a great performance yesterday so let's see if today they can confirm what they show us yesterday no yeah flow rider had a great match and now let's meet today's contestants welcome welcome everyone as we begin day two of action here in san diego as part of the pro paddle league and of course, we kick things off, we kick proceedings off here in center court with the matchup between the LA Beat and the Toronto Polar Bears. So we get things started, of course, introducing the players, starting as always with the UA team, starting with Toronto. And of course, we start out with none other than the native of Castellar de Valles, Marina Guinart. Also from Sevilla, Victoria Iglesias. From Badajoz, Pincho Fernandez. And from Madrid, Javi Barahona. And now, time for the LA beat. We start out with the native of Vienna, Valencia, Jessica Castillo. From Madrid, Eli Amatriain. From La Plata in Argentina, Agustin Gomez Silingo. And from Buenos Aires, Tolito Aguirre. All right, enjoy the match, everybody. Best of luck to all of the participants. Those are the eight players then that uh, will that will fight out this first uh, encounter. So uh, we start off with uh, the women's matchup between uh, Elia Matrián and Jess Castillo against Marina Guinart and uh, Victoria Iglesias. A great match for uh, everyone involved. Uh, Ceci, in in the drive we have Marina Guinart against Elia Matrián. Elia Matrián, of course, a former number one of the world. Um, what do you, what are you looking forward to seeing in that matchup? Well, I think that Ellie will try to impose her experience on court. No, as you said, she's a former number one. She has a lot of, of experience in this kind of team competitions. So I guess that she is going to be uh, a tough uh, rival for Marina in that cross court. But as you said, also Marina is a lefty player. She's one of the most powerful players on tour. So she will try to increase the speed of the, of, of the ball, the, the speed of the game to, to gain their advantage over Ellis. Uh, on the left side, we have uh, both Jess Castillo and Victoria Iglesias, two uh, elite players, world-class players. In the case of uh, Castillo, we've seen her already uh, winning a P1 event in Premier Paddle earlier in the year, next to uh, Claudia Jensen in Acapulco in Mexico. Um, 
Is it fair to say that these two players, Iglesias and Castillo, that they are similar style of uh, left-sided players, both, of course, with that double-handed backhand as well? Yes, they are known by their <laughs> double-handed backhand, uh, both of them uh, did perfectly. As you say, they are, have similar styles. Perhaps Chess is more active player, no? She moves faster on court and she likes also doing uh, fast and quick transitions from the back. Uh, he likes counter-attack, while Victoria perhaps is more a defensive player. Uh, I think that uh, perhaps uh, Jess is a little more aggressive uh, and Victoria is a little more consistent. Yeah, and uh, th like you said, having a lefty out on the court, uh, what, what, is the, what are the, the dangers for that if you are Elia Matria in, in that cross court with Marina Guinard? is of course quite a, a tall player as well. Yes, uh, Ellie is very used to playing again uh, lefty. It's not the first time she will have one <laughs> of them on cross court. I play many yeah, times against her. Say. Yes, so I think that she knows perfectly what she has to do. Of course, trying to avoid the forehand of Marina. Marina, it's a player that likes playing a lot near the net, not defending so so much. So uh, Ellie will be have to. Perhaps trying to play long rallies, uh, putting uh, Marina's patient uh, on um, or exam. Mm. Uh, and the conditions yesterday, we talked about it all day long, about how tricky these outdoor, these windy conditions in San Diego were. Um, just how important then is it for these four players to especially uh, start the game well and have a, a quickly adapt to the conditions? Although I have to add, I don't think it, it is as windy as it was yesterday. No, uh, playing outdoors is always more difficult than playing indoors. No? And um, perhaps the advantage that the Toronto Polar Bears played yesterday while uh, Los Angeles beat, uh, were resting, of course they train, but it's not the same to compete that training. And also they haven't tested uh, the main court. Um, today, this morning, it doesn't seem to be so windy that yesterday after, after afternoon, uh, but also Ellie is very used to play outdoors, she's a great defender uh, player and uh, we are, I'm sure that she will play the love without any problems. Mm. Yeah, like we said, uh, a former number one of the world there uh, in the, back in 2013 alongside uh, Pate Aguno. What makes her especially, what, what made her number one of the world? Was it in that defensive solidity? Yes, uh, I uh, think that uh, <laughs> Their consistency, you know, and their defensive style. Anytime we played against them, uh, it was uh, a torture because you know that you will have to play barely longer matches, and uh, uh, they were always forcing you to play one more ball. And um, I think that that was the the strong their strength. Mm. Yeah, just uh, frustrating your opponents, uh, if you will. It's, it's perhaps not the most sort of uh, spectacular way of winning the match, is it? But the, the, every win counts and it's all the same. So we were saying it as well yesterday, especially uh, at the start of the day with uh, that first encounter between the Flow Rider goes against the Las Vegas smash then. Uh, the importance of the unforced errors and not committing too many of them because you can you can win a couple of spectacular points but if you alternate those with the unforced errors you you lose all the same no it's all about regularity and taking decisions nico we have been speaking about this all these days and um for me uh, i don't think we will see a, a match with many unforced errors because they are Four players that uh, like to play long rallies. Perhaps the most aggressive of the Welcome floor is Marina, Marina Guinard, and perhaps she can uh, commit one or two mistakes system. more, but also she will get more winners. Yeah, she has a huge net presence, as you see. Marina Guinard has a very tall set, frame, and we'll um, Victoria Iglesias It's one of those players that um, can sometimes almost play yourself out of a match, can get very frustrated, um, but is also capable of winning you a match. She is, like you said, that backhand she has, that net approach that she has. It's um, that cross-court, perhaps, with Yes Castillo, who are the two most, who are the two players probably who have most sort of winning ability. Is that where this match is won or lost between Castillo and, uh, and, and Iglesias? Who can make the most winners and who can keep, perhaps more crucially, who can keep the unforced errors down? 
I think that the, the two players on court that can get more winners are Marina Guinard and Jessica Castillo, not, not Victoria Iglesias. In this case, in this pair, I think that Victoria will play like more like a right side player, no? Uh, she has to uh, give to his teammate consistency, regularity and not committing mistakes. Uh, and the power, the powerful part, the strong part goes for Marina Guinard, no? because of, of her smash, because of her rule to, the, to defense, because of her forehand volley. You know? I, I, I guess that uh, the most important thing for Marina will be her forehand uh, volley to the parallel to press over, over Jessica's corner. Let's see how all of that gets uh, put into practice then between these four players. And uh, perhaps a question that people will have as well when watching from home and when watching these outdoor tournaments is uh, what style of player, what style of player is playing outdoors most difficult for? Is it someone who likes to smash? Is it most difficult to smash? Or is it someone who likes to defend and who likes to play good quality lobs? Who, who is it most difficult for to play in outdoor conditions, generally speaking? I think that it's worse for that uh, kind of aggressive players that like, like smashing the ball and uh, playing, uh, playing at a high uh, speed, no? Because when you, when you are playing outdoor and you have the wind, uh, it's not so easy to play at so uh, so fast, so you have to reduce the speed of your shots. And when you are an aggressive player, you don't feel comfortable usually to play at a slower speed, Nico. So I guess that in this case, the the two players that will be or will feel Time. more comfortable will be Elia Matuain and Victoria Iglesias. That is often also what we say in uh, in men's paddle, especially. What makes number ones number ones a lot of time when you think about Juan Lebron and Ale Galan, for example, when you think about also more recently uh, Coelho and Tapia, they are gung-ho, all-out attack players, but they can also play on in these kind of conditions if they have to. They can also win in conditions where, where they cannot play how they like to play. Adaptability is so important. Yes, the key is uh, the power to adapt, you know, if you have the... the the capacity of adapting yourself to any conditions, of course, uh, to be number one of the world and to reach that kind of level, the top of the world of ranking of pedal, you need to adapt yourself to any any court, any condition, outdoor, indoor, windy, rainy, and everything. Well, rainy, I don't know. But yes, <laughs> sometimes we have playing uh, with uh, some rain, Nico. I remember many matches. Anyway, uh, no you rain here forecast no. in uh, San Diego. Sure. Uh, I don't think. I don't see a single cloud in the sky. Yes, Castilla will get us up and running on day two of the PPL. I smash early doors from Castilla. Another important thing to, to remark is that Elia Matruain has retired herself from the professional competition yeah. uh, at the half of last year. So I don't know how much she's training or how much she's competing. No, no, competing she's not. But I don't know how often is she training to see if she can uh, uh, hold the rhythm of this kind of match. Of course, she's a very talented player. Of course, that is always uh, the rest and recovery process. As that one goes out from Amatriain, for example, uh, Gata Tenorio, who played yesterday, won yesterday as well alongside Batiaguno. She's not playing today because she she cannot recover on a day-to-day -day basis. She needs an extra rest day. Uh, and let's see what happens to Amatriain if, if she can keep this up for several days in a row as well. Yes, I think that uh, for Ellie it would be very important uh, the chess uh, can help her not covering the middle yeah. and so Ellie uh, can do her work what she's used to do that is defending and holding and uh, uh, supporting the, the all, all the all the all the balls that she can get no she has no problem in receiving many many balls Thank you. 
RTL then, and uh, a probing. Probing sort of start to the match. Something interesting, Nico, is that Marina Guinard and Victoria Iglesias had played together in the PPL event one and two, but in that moment they weren't a usual Very couple important. on tour. Right now they have joined and they have started playing together also in Premier Park. Right. That is a huge advantage in an event like this, isn't it? Yeah, later today I've also noticed, of course, we have Marta Talavan and Uri Arulias who have played a lot of time together. Not currently, I don't think, but they have done in the past for a lot of time. And uh, Alejandra Salazar and Veronica Iviseda, of course, as well. So and Gonzalo Rubio and Mario del Castillo, they have played many times in that kind of uh, team competitions in Andalusia. Yeah. We can notice that when uh, two players know each other, they play like uh, by memory. Yeah. That's a big, big, big uh, advantage in a duo of sports. And here we got the first break of the match, Nico. Dinard yep. and Iglesias Please. took the one first break, break point two. and start leading 1-0. Great, great start for uh, Toronto here, who yesterday won 3-0 uh, against Miami Paddle Club, winning all three of their games. And in two of them, they had to come back from a set down. So it's, uh, it's just one of those teams that just don't know when they're beaten. Victoria Iglesias, to serve. Victoria Iglesias will get us underway again after herself and her partner Marina Guinard have gotten the first break on the board already for Toronto. Looks like we're seeing on that side of the court a lot of volleys and a lot of balls going into the net. Is that a case of them staring into the sun? Is that a case of because the wind is blowing uh, from the camera for the people at home, the wind is blowing LA coach giving them instructions. Surely asking uh, Jessica Castillo to reclaim to claim some uh, some balls, more balls in the middle. Oh, but she has to be she has to be very careful anytime she wants to help Ellie in the middle because she's playing with a lefty. So yeah. for Marina it will be very easy to play parallel with yeah. her fork forehand. Yeah, that's one of the many advantages you have as a lefty, that that angle, that parallel angle is a little bit easier to find. Game. And they confirm that break, Toronto. so it's 2-0 uh, Toronto Four straight others. away. Lead. Two games, two series. Elisabetta playing. Yesterday with so many matches starting like this, I remember, uh, for example, Alejandra and um, Veronica Virceda starting 3 nil down yeah. against uh, Andrea Ustero and Virginia Herrera and then uh, coming back, the starting feeling better. So sometimes uh, not starting well doesn't mean that you finally will lose the match. They need time, especially early, I think, to get used to these conditions. Beautiful body from Victoria. Yes, yes. Lot Setting, uh, a lot of winners early doors there. She wasn't lucky this uh, season uh, because she started playing Barbara Laceras yeah. and uh, I think that Barbara didn't recover at, at, at her 100% after the, the knee injury. Yeah, we said yesterday wow. there is the double-handed backhand from Victoria Iglesias okay. with some help from the Nets, we have to say. But what a bullet suddenly coming out of that backhand. 
I think that Victoria's backhand, double backhand, is the best of the two. Also with uh, Paula Jose Maria's mm. double backhand. Yeah, few uh, players like to play that double banded, uh, double handed backhand. Yeah, yes, Castillo has one as well. Paula Jose Maria, like you said, Marta Marrero has just come back from temporary retirement after becoming a mother. She has uh, a heck of a double handed backhand as well. I think that uh, Marta Marrero was the first when I remember playing the double handed backhand. Yeah, because she was a professional tennis, tennis. player before becoming a paddle player, which is not as common anymore, but used to be the case with almost every player. Yes, but now we have many uh, paddle players that yeah. uh, play, decided to play with a double handed backhand. Even young players that mistake from Thank Marina. You. As we said, he. Surely she will be the the player of her of her team that will commit more mistakes, but also probably will get more winners. from Yes Castillo. So here we go again. Two more break points for Toronto. It's not been an ideal start for Amatriain and Castillo. No, another break could be lethal for them, at least for the first set, Nico. Not the, not the start they have dream, of course. They get it as well. Elita Amatiain cannot keep it up uh, Toronto with first. the forehand volley. 3 0 Toronto. First. And two breaks as we go to the bench. We could listen uh, Seva Nerone talking to Ellie, no? Trying to give her, give her I mean, I mean, some I'm calm, saying that uh, she will finally enter the game. We know that she's still trying to look for her best level. Also, Jessica is not having a great day, uh, at, at least these three games. We haven't seen what uh, we can expect from her. As you said, Nico, they won. She won with uh, Claudia Jensen, won uh, the P1 of Acapulco. Yeah. Had a, a great season. So yes, far. but then after after great start, she and Fifth Claudia minute. perhaps started uh, going down. Yeah. Yeah, they, it seemed like they always reached the quarterfinal, but they never got out of the quarterfinal. Started to stagnate a little bit. Last season it was the same for them because they started very yeah, strong absolutely. in 2023. Finally, at the middle of the year, they decided to split up, just they did now, because Jessica Castillo will start playing from Madrid with uh, Alejandra Salazar. We didn't know, we don't know yet who is gonna join Claudia Jensen. It's a difficult volley to respond. 
respond to. Pinard defending from the back. Wow, great reactions here from Victoria Iglesias. The lob from Guinard to reset things. Sky lob from, yes, Castello. Difficult to pick out of the sky for Iglesias. We can see how Jessica is claiming that middle, that center of the court. Yeah. That time she took a bad decision because she had angle to play that, but in, if that ball had passed the net, she she, she should uh, come really fast to her side of the court because it was empty. Similar shot, but uh, with a bit of help, she does get it over. The lob over Amatiai. That's a beautiful lob from Castillo. Who's pegging back in art. Nice volley from Ellie. Should be an easy one for Yes Castillo smacks it out of the cage. Ferio. The Portres from Yes Castillo. After a short lob, well, they prepared that point all the way, finally got a tasty lob to attack, and that she did. I think that it would be better than Ellie and move one step closer to the net to press a little bit more with her bullies. And uh, because if they play a love to you, you can restart the game from the back easily. No, but uh, she won't make any pressure with the bandeja. So I prefer her to play near the net, trying to do a little bit of harm with that bullies. I think when you get got spooked by uh, an insect there. Spotted a couple of dragonflies buzzing about here. Oh, the passing shots is brilliant from Marina Guinard and that makes it four games to nil Toronto. What an amazing start now for uh, the Toronto Polar Bears. Yesterday they make a great comeback and equal against uh, Miami. They started losing the first set against Nuria Rodriguez and Marta Talavan. Finally, they got their victory in the super tie break. Yeah. Also, the male pair. Doing the same, yeah. Both uh, Toronto couples coming back from a set down yesterday, which is great news for them. Just having that resilience as that is out from oh, Amatiain. Who really? has not had a great start to the match, has she? No, no, Ellie is not her. Uh, it's not happy what, uh, with her level. We can notice in her in her face. But she's an uh, absolutely warrior. She, she will keep fighting. I think that love will... No, it enters. Good love from Castillo. Covering now all the court with the Bivora. But that's the risk for her. If she plays her Bibora to victorious backhand, she will be counter attack every time. And it's not easy to move so fast from behind the back of Ellie to her own place. It's love 30 and again, Guinard and Iglesias threatening their service. Guinard puts it up high. Good love from Marina. And another, another chance to break four chances to get another oh, break, yeah. Nico. Yeah, Castillo and uh, Amatriain just cannot seem to keep up. They are absolutely dominating the game as they wish. For the moment, no reaction for LA team.
good attack from Jessica Castello now to get the first point of the game, 50-40. Great combination play from Yes. First that very, very sharp volley. But didn't have a lot of rebounds. <laughs> oh, Accelerating. You now caught it. Yes, off the glass. Castillo keeps up the pressure and getting mixed up there. Arginar and Iglesias both both left it for the other player and neither got it. So from four break points, they've only got two left. It would be very important for uh, Madrien and Castillo to keep this service game safe away from another break. Not a good love from uh, Victoria. Finally saved by the Marina. Nice beaver and nice attack from Jessica Castillo. Yes. Got the point. Playing now with a lot of authority in the net. First goal points of the match then. Who will return it? They are discussing. It's uh, Victoria. To receive. No, it's uh, Victoria Iglesias to receive. Yeah. Umpire got that one wrong. Again, Marina Aguinari a bit spooked. Uh, I don't fight. know if so yeah, it's a to be. No, it's a, uh, no. It's a dragonfly in there. Not a big fan of it. <laughs> they have a company into the court. <laughs> There's quite a few of them buzzing about here. I don't think this will be the first one entering the court or uh, the last. Matiain is coming over to lend a helping hand. Let's see what happens here. He was brave enough. with your hand. Oh, everyone's coming over now. Well, now it's gone. There you go. Teamwork makes the dream work. And now we can actually play this gold point again. It's uh, four games to nil. Gold points. Guinard and Iglesias can make it 5 0. They can make this three breaks in a row. Smash from Amatriain, and she gets it to go. They successfully defend four break points. Game and it is 4 1 still, though, to Toronto. They lead by two breaks, they lead by four games to one.
time. Back underway with uh, the Toronto Polar Bears having a commanding lead of this opening match of the day. Marina Guinart and Victoria Iglesias with a firm grip on the opening sets and uh, Marina Guinart smacking that one out of the cage right on cue to make it 15-0. Two breaks the difference. And they have survived the third break, Nico. Perhaps that could be the start oh. of a new game for LA Beat. Seva was trying to give them uh, some uh, advice to Jessica, asking her to be brave, to play brave anytime she's near the net. Good luck from Victoria now. Jessica holding with the bandeja. Good angle now from Victoria. Perfectly executed by the player born in Sevilla, Spain. In my opinion, Nico, it would be very difficult for Ellie and, and Jessica to come back right now because I think that if Victoria and Marina, they have their, their ideas very clear about how they can play, how they need to play today. And for the moment, they are doing perfectly. That lob doesn't even stay inside of the courts what for Yes Castello. That makes it 40-15. And like you said, it's, it's a long old way back. And it just seems like they're a lot more uncomfortable compared to Guinard and Iglesias on the other side, who don't seem to be that bothered by these conditions, but Amatriain and Castillo are almost fighting themselves. Yes, I'm not, I'm not saying that they cannot come back because of the result, because of the scoreboard, no? That distance is not the real problem. The problem is the feeling mm. we are having when we are seeing them. Yeah, Iglesias was just absolutely pegged into the corner there. Now it's 40-30. Powerful double back end. You know, accelerates, but it's slowed down tremendously by the net. And Iglesias, I don't think she needed to get a touch there. But we have a goal point then, and for the first time, LA have a chance to break. Yes, let's see if they can take this break and start. Feeling better, feeling more confidence. Not a good decision from Marina, striking that ball from uh, from the line. It was not uh, not an easy position. Good luck from Jessica. Victoria trying to play on her parallel. taking that law from um. Amatriain and the unforced error from Marina Guinard. So yeah, LA now winning two games in a row after losing the first four. Yes, incredible, no? Because it, they were leading 4-0. They yeah. had four break points to put that five in the scoreboard. Then the LA beat survived that uh, break points. And now they recover another one. 
so the distance is shorter right now. And now it uh, feels like momentum is slowly shifting the other way. up a high lob. Iglesias brings it down. And I think Amadre ain't got a touch. Yeah, she stopped the point. Not as much. It's 15 uh, all. So Marina playing a oh. double-handed backhand. Now Marina is not in a good moment, Nico. Yeah, it doesn't feel as much as that LA are coming back into the match. It's more that Toronto are starting to make a lot more mistakes. Yes, it's kind of the disconnect from the game. Perhaps that advantage, that huge advantage, make them relaxed. Lose the concentration. Oof. Iglesias is blocked by Castillo. Well played by Amatriain, but they stay back. And that block is out from Iglesias, 40-15. Yes. Like we are, uh, keep saying now, it does feel like uh, Toronto are playing themselves out of this match almost, even though they have uh, quite a big margin that they've built up. As you said, Nico, it seems like momentum has changed from one side to another. I won't get tired of saying that anytime you have the chance to kill your opponent, you must do it. Mm. If you hesitate, then you give them one more chance to live. Good parallel now from Marina. Closing the net. Many dabs for the Toronto Polar Bears now. Plucked out of the sky by Iglesias, who went into attack mode, but Castillo was equal to it. Castillo smashes, covers, Iglesias puts up the lob. Castillo returns the favor. A bit Oof. awkward there for Iglesias. What an wow. angle for Amelia Matriain. The angle Matriain. that Elia Matriain opens up. The former number one of the world flexing her muscles on the 20 by 10. And this is 4-3. The LA Beats winning three games in a row now. Let's have another look at this. The angle found by the legend. Here, meanwhile, action over on core two. We have uh, the San Diego Stingrays taking on the Flow Rider Ghost. So the local team in the, the Stingrays in action for the first time. And it is exactly them. San Diego Stingrays in the form of Lucia Sainz and Julieta Vidaoria who 
find themselves 5-2 up against Arantha Osoro and Yematria. I remember Osoro and Tria yesterday also uh, lost the first set convincingly against the Flow Rider Goats. Then came back to win the match, but let's uh, let's stick with court two here with the grandstand court and see if uh, Sainz and Bidaoria can secure this set before we return to action on center court. Bidaoria, that's too low, so that will make it 5 3 here. But Lucia Sainz now will serve for the first set. You pair. Here with uh, Lucia Sainz and uh, Julieta Vida Oria, two powerful players. Lucia can play both both uh, sides. Now they will serve for the set, as you said, Nico. Osoro Atriai, yesterday they started losing the first set and they made a great comeback against Marta Ortega and Alejandro Alonso. Four Let's players see. here who uh, know each other very well, of course. Lucia Sainz and Yematriai played together for five years i want to say from 2016 until 2020 became number ones of the world together so lucia Sainz at the bottom right are now serving and yamatria at the top right of your picture and uh, julieta vidaoria and aranta osoro well know each other from the national team i don't think they've played together at uh, at world paddle tour slash premier paddle level no no they didn't play together and i guess they didn't play together also in the national team i don't, don't remember them uh, sharing now, Arantha Even usually plays on the left, doesn't she, when she plays for Argentina? Yes, anytime she plays for Argentina, she yeah. changes uh, her size. Yeah, there, there's a real shortage of left-sided players. With She uh, used to play with Delphi Brea in the beginnings, in the beginnings in Argentina. Great attack there from Yema Triay. Now it's 30-15. Yeah. We will stick with uh, this match until the end of the set, if Sainz and Bidauria can close it out. Remember on the center court, meanwhile, it's 4-3 uh, to the Toronto Polar Bears, still leading by one break. But it's uh, not been business as usual there, as meanwhile here. It is three set points to Sainz and Bidauria. Three set points to San Diego here, playing on home soil. Yes, and Nico, the local team, it's debuting today in this event. Yesterday they have uh, the rest day. San Diego and LA, the two California teams, have their respective uh, rest days. Sora puts up the lob. Signs deep into the corner, and that is out from Aranza Osoro, and that means the first set goes to the San Diego Stingrays, the first set goes to Lucia Sainz and Julieta Bidaoria, so uh, advantage San Diego there as we return to center court, where it is 40 love to Toronto at four games to three. Marina and Victoria trying to stop the bleeding. No three games in a row for LA Beat. Yeah, that one didn't catch that one well at all. 5 3. Toronto then. Jessica will serve to stay in the set. To have one more chance to battle for it. They need to win this one. A lot of talking between Ellie and Jessica. For sure, they are trying to build a strategy to to win this game of service. Nice Vibra from uh, Castillo. Another one. But a great defensive work from Victoria. That's a 
Nice lob from Mohamed Yang. And the return is even better from Victoria Iglesias, who just places that in the middle. The sort of Chiquita off the, the, the back wall. Yes, but I think that Jessica was expecting a powerful yeah. uh, backhand because of the... We all were. Yes, because the way she prepared before hitting the ball, it seems to be uh, for a powerful one, not the Dutch Chiquita. to see that coming, but then just could not quite execute. Got on the end of it, but couldn't slow down the pace at which uh, the ball was traveling. That makes it 15 all. Good return from uh, Guinard, 30-15, easy point for LA Beat. When you are in this kind of situations, it's really, really good to have this kind of easy points, quick points. Amatiana adjusted well there, it was tricky. Iglesias. Matiain in attack mode. Castillo has a look, fires the Vajara through the middle. Pinar saves. And now plays the lob over Elia Matiain. That places it. Edges forward towards the net. Castillo wants to go head to head, but then plays it out. Yes, there was no space there. Not a place so parallel. She should have repeat one more to Marina's body to get one more step closer to the net. It's a 30 all. First serve in for Castillo. Now being yeah. much more aggressive, Jessica, from the left side. It's a lot more like it. Amatiain did a very similar play earlier, where she played that volley to the, to the middle, got someone out of position, and then smashed it. It's not perhaps the, the greatest smash of all time, but it's all about your, both your opponents are at the back of the court, so if you smash it forward, they're just so far out of position that they won't recover in time. No, it was out. <laughs> I yes. thought for a second that, that was a very nice return, but it hit the side fence. So it won't count for Victoria Iglesias. 5-4 then. She will be the one, Victoria Iglesias, who will serve for the sets when we come back.
interesting conversation between Seba Neroni and Jesse Kennelly, you know, the first step, as he said, the first step to start changing the story of this match was stop committing unforced errors, no? not giving uh, Marina and Victoria easy points. So that was the main message from uh, Seba Neroni. Keep concentrated, fighting for every point, playing long rallies, and being patient. Wow, some uh, reflection of the net. A bit of good fortune there for Marina Guinard, but she will take that happily. 30 love, two points away from securing this first set to Toronto, but even though they're winning the sets, I don't think But it doesn't feel by any stretch of the imagination that they are dominating this match. No, the feeling has absolutely changed, Nico. It was once till the 4 nil in the score, then a uh, story changed. LA started feeling better. And now I think that uh, Marine and uh, Victoria are having many, many doubts about, about the strategy, about the game plan. Again, uh, Jessica being the decisive near the net with that volley. First service in for Victoria. Not a good uh, love from Jessica now, short love. And Marina had no mercy, striking the ball. Two set points then for Toronto. As Castellón and Matián have a brief conversation there of how they are going to attack this point. Uh, Vibora from Marina Guinard to close out the sets. It is 6 4 Toronto. It is 6 4 Guinard Iglesias advantage. Polar Bears as the players retire to the benches. Okay. 
Second set's up and running here at the Barnes Tennis Center in San Diego. Very important for LAB to start differently from the beginning of the game, of the match. Wow, another fortune yeah. for Marina Guinard, again with the help of the net. Out it goes from Yes Castello. It's 15.30, they need to be very careful about not starting being broken. Jessica looks better, with a little more of confidence, she's trying to play more aggressively, as we saw recent, that uh, last volley. Good love from Ellie. Bingo. Not at all. Finally, the wind took that ball out. And it's 1540. Again, many, many problems. And another, <laughs> another strange visitor. Yep. Marina Aguinar again. The one uh, who has it in her corner. Wow, what a powerful smash from Victoria. Powerful backhand. Keeps it down low, does uh, Yes Castillo. Yes. Marina is having many problems with the sun uh, from that uh, side of the court, Nico. As a lefty, when she receives a love from Ellie, she doesn't see the ball at all. Not like that. It's uh, two more break points for Toronto. Who can start the second set off on the right foot? The drop will fire the bajada. No, plays the lob. Castello. Oof, in the limit. Yeah. Well held as well by Kinar. Castello lends a helping hand that leaves a big gap on her side of the court, and it's Julie yeah, exploits yeah. it. That is the risk of venturing so yeah. far over into your teammate's uh, side of the court. You leave a big gap yeah. on your own, and it's Julie exploited by Toronto, who take the lead of the second set. They break straight away. It's a game to nil. Toronto in very, very good shape right now. change of sides then. And again, the LA beats when it was uh, looking like things were going a bit better.
Castillo puts it up high. The drop shot from Victoria Iglesias is excellent. The same start as the first set, Nico, with the Toronto Polar Bears dominating the game. Iglesias who sends one back at the rivals again staring right into the stun and we are happy uh, to be joined here in the commentary booth by uh, former number one of the world Patti Yaguno. Patti uh, congratulations on the victory yesterday and thank you for being with us. Thank you Nico uh, thanks for inviting me to be here with you guys. Uh, we spoke yesterday with uh, Yematriai about the, the conditions here. Can you talk to us a little bit about just how difficult these windy, sun, sunny California conditions are? Well, uh, we already had these uh, hard conditions when we came first to Miami, the first two weeks of the PPL. So we weren't surprised that we could find something similar here. Uh, actually, we thought that it's not as, uh, as hot as it was in Miami. It was um, even more humid over there. But yeah, the court is not, it's not been easy to to adapt to the court, but I mean, uh, that's why uh, I think we, we have to play uh, basic paddle <laughs> at the beginning, like uh, try to get confidence with the lobs and uh, put a lot of volume uh, on the on every point. And, and that's what, what we did yesterday. And, I think we, we did a great job with, with Kata for, for the team Arkans. How was it playing with Kata? You said in the interview after the match yesterday that it was a real pleasure playing with her again. Uh, what, what was it like? In PPL for the Arkansas team and uh, I told her like we've been playing against each other so many, so many years that uh, it, was, it was really nice playing with her next to her because I think we understand paddle the same way, so that made it made it easier for both of us to to how to move on the court and how to get every point. So it's it's been a great pleasure, and I'm enjoying every game with her. We we said with Nico that you were playing old school paddle yesterday <laughs> against the teens. <laughs> yeah, that's a good thing about paddle. The, yeah, the old school uh, also. It gives you a lot, so I think with these conditions, especially old school paddle is, is a great it's a great weapon. <laughs> I play with you many times in outdoor conditions, and you are a specialist for me. Uh, yeah. Yesterday, it seems that you were playing without any wind because you put the lobs in the corner in the last meter of the court, and we said, "How is she doing?" Because anyone, everyone was playing the lobs out of court and you were putting that ball in the corner. It was amazing. <laughs> Congrats, Patty. Thank you, Tati. And uh, Ceci was saying as well that she won her first ever title with yeah. you yeah. back in 2009. <laughs> that was an outdoor, but I mean, no, we, did it was great. Not, <laughs> we did it great, but indoors. I, I don't like playing outdoor at all. And, yeah. and today you play with uh, with Ara Martinez. Uh -huh. is, that, is that a new experience for you as well? Have you played with her before? No, it's it's gonna be the first time, so I'm ready for another first time and, and Top try match to against Marta Ortega and Ale Alejandra Alonso. Yeah, I know. It's it's they're both great players, <laughs> and I mean, I don't know. We're gonna have to give the best of us to have at least a little chance to to win. So yes, and Araceli will play in the right side of court, and actually she's playing in the left side, so she will have to adapt. Yeah, I, but uh, Araceli, I think she already played on the right side uh, a few years ago. And I mean, I told her, and I know her from a long time ago because she's from Murcia, the same ah, city, the true. same region as I am. And I remember her being a little girl, and she, like she's really talented, and I think she can, she can do great in her career. So now, Patty, yesterday you showed that Arkansas is a very reliable team. Now you have a strength on your. Coaster, uh, roasters, and today you are joining by uh, Gonzalo Alfonso. How do you think this could um, affect you? Do you think it's a good reinforcement for your team? Gonzalo Alfonso? No, Gonzalo, no, sorry. Jofre, uh, no? Jofre, yes. Mean? Yeah, Jofre. Uh, no, you will face Gonzalo Alfonso yes. that will reinforce Las Vegas match, sorry. Yeah, we suffer him in the, yeah. in the last. Uh, the last PPL and I mean he's such a great player and I play him on the mixed double yeah and, I mean he could win you so many points like playing is low I was I was 
I was really impressed well, okay. about this this guy because um, he always surprised you. Yeah, like you never know what he's <laughs> going to do. I mean, I mean you're thinking, okay, the ball is going to go that way, and you go that way, but still <laughs> <laughs> it makes you the point in, in that same spot. So it's terrible, but he's he's great. I like him a lot. Well, Patti, thank you so much for uh, for being with us. I don't think we'll hold you up for any longer. No, I mean, <laughs> it's, uh, it's been a real pleasure. I'll be happy to, to come back <laughs> yeah. anytime you want. Well, so we'll take you up on you that later in the week. You can come every time you want. <laughs> you guys enjoy the the day of today. I mean, they're going to be great matches for yeah. sure. Yeah, we'll so enjoy commentating on your game later as well. Yeah, we're going to get ready for that. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, guys. Okay, thank you, you so much. Thank you, Patti. There you go, former number one of the world, Patti Yaguna. Always a pleasure talking to her and hearing from her as we have another break here on center court. It is three games to nil to the Toronto Polar Bears. Iglesias and Guinard mustering yet another break. LA Beats are in big, big trouble. Positive reinforcement from uh, coach Seba Nerone. Good to, good to hear from him, as always. Asking Ellie what she need from uh, her partner, no? Uh, because Seba is uh, noticing that it's Ellie the one who is having not a good moment now, and she needs perhaps some help. But uh, she, he wanted to define a strategy, a clear strategy follow trying of course to find some kind of solutions for them because at this time it looks like we are seeing the same moving that in the first set with the Toronto Polar Bears dominating now a mistake from Marina 15 all yeah, brewing that error is uh, Marina Guinart Although they're in great shape here. Having said that, though, again, we saw it in the first set, they took a commanding 4 0 lead. And then the counter broken, and then it was uh, a lot closer at some point. Here's Amatriain. Iglesias puts up the law, brought down by Castillo. The flat double handed backhand from Victoria Iglesias. Guinard accelerating things, and Castillo cannot quite keep that one in. Thirty all then. Good decision making from both Iglesias and Guinard. We 
just uh, went through the gears there. Right now, the for LA is uh, just about resisting, trying to get one wow. break back, and now they have the chance. It's 30 40. Great counter attack from Jessica with that backhand off the wall. Beautiful shot from her. the gap a little bit here and they will completely caught that wrong yeah. Marina Guinash staring right into the sun yeah. and catching the ball all kinds of wrong it's three games to one then Nico that could be one of the solutions for them no playing now lobs over Marina because it's very clear that she's not seeing anything when you're a lefty in this case perhaps if she's uh, if she was a right handed player, she won't be having this problem with the sun in this direction. But right now she's staring at the sun. Adrian, high lob. Ah, Iglesias went for that uh, lethal backhand again. That time didn't get enough height on it. love for Ellie Beat. Ellie playing cross court. And again, Marina with another mistake. Too many ups and downs for the lefty player of the Toronto Polar Bears. They have detected that uh, she has uh, lost a uh, little bit of concentration and they are putting all the balls on her corner. Victoria has been more solid along the game. Nice high ball from Castellon. That's, no, it's not to go out of the court for this Castellon there who looked to finish off the points and the game. Keeps it alive. Still alive as uh, Victoria Iglesias tried to smash that one, but Amatriain couldn't negotiate it back across. Too strange as smashes, Nico. <laughs> it seems to be easy ones, but none of the players were able to finish the point. beat then gets uh, the, another game back so once more it's uh, similar to the first set they trail by two breaks get one break back and are back in it
Back underway with Marina Guinart on her serve. Toronto just trying to uh, keep their lead intact. They don't want it to melt like uh, snow in front of the sun, especially if you're a polar bear. Let's see if uh, from this side of the court, Marina suffers less and she can uh, recover her level of the first three games. Caught it wrong. Very low. Plenty of mishaps uh, we've seen here, courtesy of uh, the sun, the wind, the sun, everything. Marina again pulling this pulling the trigger to get that point. Good smash from her. For the love. Very, very high from Amatriai. Trying to play Chiquita. Iglesias Lost being just. moved all over the court. And she yields under the pressure. But still 40-30, 40-50. Castillo did very Oof. well. This is still in. Saved off the back glass by Iglesias, who again tried to attack with that backhand. And again, it is off the mark. 40-30. Got to be careful. Yes, they're going to be careful because uh, they know that uh, Jessica and Ellie can come back in any moment. These kind of mistakes are not helping them to close the match. Chiquita from Jessica. And a better approach to the net from Elia Matrain to put that ball in the middle. Deuce. It's Deuce Nico. It's a golden point again from a 3 0. The LA beat had the chance to tie the, this second set to three. Yes, Castillo will receive this crucial gold point. Well, Toronto. This is a, a big fork in the road for them. And they will keep their advantage as that low from Elia Matiain goes well out onto the side glass. So Toronto survive, the polar bear survive. Now it's turn for Eli to serve. She's not happy at all with that last love, Nico. 
She knows that it was a great opportunity for them to stay in the match. Nice smash from Castillo. Come way out that someone's going to hit us in the commentary booth. That one from Castillo. And I think, Nico, that the winds start blowing uh, stronger mm. right now. Yesterday was the same because at the beginning of the morning it was less windy than, uh, than in the afternoon. Good service now from Mama Jane, 30 15. Another bad return from Guinard. service again. Madrain really having a look at Dinard here and Castillo. Crucial unforced error. Yes, she's having some uh, problems anytime she's hitting the ball behind Eddie. Of course she needs to do it. She needs to have her Good return. Uh, brilliant oh, return. No, no, no. no. Oh, wait, it was out. Yes, it was out. I thought that it, it had a touch uh, the glass, not the fence. But they agree it was out. I can see that there clearly that it touched something. Tries a smash, fakes one this time. Amatriain can defend that one with ease, has to come over and lend a helping hand. Somehow kept it in. Switch back now. Castilla plucks it out of the sky with a bit of help. Uh, Iglesias kept it alive too. Oof. And that is out from Castillo. It definitely is. So will be a gold point and a chance for Toronto to reinstate their two break advantage. It was amazing how the wind moved that ball. It's a golden point. Another chance for the Toronto Polar Bears to break again. Victoria Iglesias will return. Good luck from her. Matriain looking for the angle. It's closed down by Guinard. Iglesias, lob. Castillo fires it back at Victoria Iglesias, then has to hurry across. Castillo. Good reset. And Castillo covering all the court, Nico. Yeah. Going from one side to another, helping Ellie. They keep the same uh, positions. Ah, Iglesias was caught completely wrong footed there. So they survive that gold point. 4 3 then, but Toronto still leads by a single break.
back on. And that was, was Sebastian Nerone was telling them. Yeah. And Nico, I think that we have uh, some news from the other card that in a moment we will see. A lot of talking between Ellie and uh, Jessica now, trying to stop the game, to control the tempos. Wow, somehow kept alive by Yes Castillo. Incredible save. Thirteen. Love. Iglesias again struggling to to uh, readjust. Good attack now from Eli. With that parallel volley to Jessica's corner. With a lot of pressure. 30-15. Good love. Castillo always looking to up the ante. You know, puts the skies on that. No matter ain't just about readjusted. Castillo comes across. Castillo doing a great effort. Oof. Oh, and uh, Iglesias had a chance to attack there, but only found the net. Easy point now for Eli because uh, that match she was too short, too flat. Victoria had the chance to counter attack, but finally failed it. And now it's 30 all. open. Good well, block. Very well held by Elia Matriahi. Now here come LA. Castillo applying the pressure. Again Eli with the love. The now one backhand from Castillo to Victoria Iglesias and Amatriahi finishes it off on the follow-up. Beautiful, beautiful battle between uh, that two Double-handed backhands in the cross court between Jessica and Victoria. From one backhand to another. And it's 30, 40. LA, the LA beat had the chance to get a break again, and, and they, they did get it. it. Jessica Castillo makes it four games apiece. So LA Beats have come back from two breaks down. And let's go over to the grandstand. Let's go over to uh, the San Diego against Flo Rider Goats match because I believe there is a match point there. And they are about to win wow. this amazing match, Nico. Would be a bit of an upset here. Lucia Sainz and Julieta Vidaoria one point away from causing an upset. Yes, the San Diego Stingrays playing at home. One point away from their first victory as a team and uh, defeating Osoro Ooh. and... Uh, they don't get it there. So it will be a goal point. And it will be Gemma Triai, the one who will receive it. You see a signs to serve. One more chance for them. Signs to Triai. The love for uh, Julieta. Good volley. Beautiful volley from Julieta Vidaoria. And that is it. Game set and match. San Diego. Osoro and DI lose. The Flowrider Goats are a point down then in that series against the San Diego Stingrays. The local team are up.
against the flow rider goats great news for san diego there as we are back at center court where uh, toronto are trying to get a point up against the la beat as well although and nico in that uh, grandstand court all the pressure now for martin dineno and pablo lijo because they are now forced to get the win for their team against Maxi Sanchez and Miguel Lamperti. Yeah, absolutely. Dineno, tremendous in his debut yesterday. And in case they win the match, we will have an amazing double mix matchup between Lucia Sainz and Miguel Lamperti against Gemma Triay and Pablo Lima. Castillo smashing once and twice until she gets what she wants, which is this point. She makes it 30-15. She punished that corner. And watch out because here they are really close. Remember that if we had a third set, it's not a, an entire set. It's only a super tie break. And it's 40-15 for Amatria in Castillo now. Cleverly finished off by Yes Castillo there. Castillo has increased her level, Nico, during the game. Now she looks more confident. Marina Guinart on that side of the court really suffers. Wow. Victoria Iglesias kept it alive, but it won't matter yeah. as Yes Castillo finishes it off. So for the first time in either set, LA Beats are in the lead. They are 5-4 up. Marina Guinard will serve when we come back to tie it up again. Clear instructions from uh, Severone to Elia Matrein again. He said, if you are far from the net, please let the ball pass and start again from the back. Now the mistake from Marina, and it's low, 15. Let's see if the LA beat can break and for and for the tie break good love from Ellie Victoria with the bajada again approaching the net now the mistake from Jessica <laughs> Toronto now have reached a stage where they have to be careful as they've lost five of the last six games. 
You have to be careful not to be broken again here. Especially because if they are broken, they are losing the set. Yeah. Nico. And it's very strange because they seem to have dominated almost the whole game. Yeah. But then they have many disconnections. Especially Marina Guinard. Good love now from Jessica. Castillo Oof. was down on her knees and I Iglesias could calmly <laughs> place that behind her. We can see from here that the Miami Paddle Club is centering the club. They have arrived because they are the next to play here. Yeah. They take on the Cancun waves after this. They have a really tough matchup today. Remember that they lost they lost yesterday against the Toronto Polar Bears. And today it seems like the challenge is even tougher. Castillo just couldn't uh, block that backhand with her backhand. Yes. As well to keep it in, the Chiquita is out from uh, Matrain. I don't think Elise is so sure about that ball going out. That's why they are talking. Finally, they agree. She'll have to concede that point. And it's 5 all again. Who can take the second set? from Victoria Iglesias, a winner love. Don't see those very often. Very much the case there. One poor return from Iglesias, who gives the point right back that she just earned. with the return that goes out. So back-to-back -back returns off the mark for Toronto. Castillo, able 
able to flip up a high low. Nice save, catching it before the fence. Now it's Yain. Digs it out, Victorias, Victoria Iglesias, excuse me. Punches it down. Leaves this one for Guinard, who doesn't have a lot of real estate, so she puts up the lob. Same goes for Castillo. Tries to smash the skin out of it, catches it completely wrong. Oh, and a nice block from Victoria Iglesias at the end of all of that. It's a 30 all. This time, the return is equal to it. And Jessica Castillo puts it into the net. So it's two break points for Toronto to retake the lead of the set. Oof. To oh, the return is out. Too strong, that lob. Golden point. Three returns that have gone out this game alone from uh, Iglesias and Guinard. Who is going to receive? Victoria, again. Backhand. Good bajada now from Victoria. Matriain tries to smash as the Yo switches directions. Kinak does well to block. Castillo survives. Castillo and Amatriain and the LA Beat survive. Six games to five on their side as we go back to the benches. Will we have a tie break or can we have a late break?
Toronto Polar Bears to serve to force the tie break. Sevanerone asking the, his players to be brave right now. They have nothing, nothing to lose. They have secured at least the tie break of this set. Beautiful backhand from Castello. Another one for her list. Ellie got the chance, couldn't finish the point. But Castillo did it. Very brave, the player from oh, Valencia. Doing exactly what Sebas asked her. And it's law 15. take advantage again of how much Toronto suffer when they're standing on this side of the court looking into the sun. Beautiful yeah. approach from pa from Eli with that oh, passing okay. shot. Love 30. by Amatria in that smash. Oh, Guinard, unorthodox shot, but it beat Castillo. About to go back and get it. Good love now from Amatria into the corner. Wow, Castillo <laughs> accelerated and Iglesias tried to return it, but out it oh, went, boy. so it's love 40 and four. Break points for LA. And Nico, four set points. They're only one point away from uh, forcing the super tie break. And they were all the game running from behind. Oof. Almost a double fold from Victoria. Good love. Beautiful. Matriain finds the angle again. Elia Matriain with the winner to seal the deal and to seal the second set. So we are going to the super tie break to determine the winner of this first encounter between the LA Beats and the Toronto Polar Bears.
total rate will depend on A super tie break then to determine who will take this opening match between the LA Beats and the Toronto Polar Bears. Yes, Castillo gets us up and running. And the unforced error from Victoria Iglesias who looks frustrated out there. Yes, because uh, for them it should be really awkward now to be in this situation after dominating almost the whole game. They were leading four, nil in the first one, three nil in the second one, with two breaks of advantage in each in each set. And of course, uh, I believe that they cannot understand what ha had happened. Another point. Yeah, just uh, stop and stare and look at each other there, the Iglesias and Guinard. Don't know. Both thinking that the other player would go for it. In great uh, exercise of resistance from uh, Madrien, no, because she wasn't feeling really well yeah. at the beginning of the of the first set and the second set also. But she keeps fighting. Smash from Castillo, well held by Guinard. And that one is out from Victoria Iglesias. So it's a 3 0 with service. And too many breaks, Nico. Yeah. Complete one way traffic now. And uh, Victoria moving herself, trying to reactivate. But now the dynamic has absolutely changed size. And it's 4-0 for the LA Bid. The champions of the event two in Miami. And 5-0. Way out that one. They are out of the match. Yeah, they're completely, they've checked out it almost seems. Bad news bears for the Toronto Polar Bears. If finally uh, uh, Matvien and Casajo win this match, it would be a master class of how you can win without having the best feelings on court. Mm. It's all about waiting your moment fighting and keep believing till the end. Five one. Finally, the Toronto Polar Bears got their first point of this super tie break. Oh, it's a start. It's a long way back, though. Let's see if they can uh, continue. As now we switch sides, and at least they're standing on the side of the courts where they have been more comfortable all game long.
Marina Guinard to serve. Elliot trying to approach the net. Finally, Jessica with a powerful, too powerful backhand that goes straight to the back wall. And it's 5-2. After this match, we will have the male matchup representing LA Bid, Agustin Gomez Lingo, alongside Leonel Tonito Aguirre, and from the Toronto Polar Bears, Pincho Fernandez, alongside Javier Barahona. 6-2. For LA beat. Still got two mini breaks of advantage. Nice passing shot there. The angle from Victoria Iglesias does well. Serve goes back the other way now. Castillo looking to finish it off, doesn't do so. And now that smash does do the trick from Yes Castillo. Very important the way that uh, Jessica has grown since the beginning of this match. Till now, she's another player. Now she's the player we expect her to be. Good love. As they are fires blocked by Iglesias. Now Amadrián putting up the lob. In steps Castillo. Short lob that one from Amatiain. Somehow Castillo kept it in and Amatiain couldn't block that time. So 7 4. They got one more point. Ellie will serve to keep the distance. Out. Yes, it will be out from Amadiain there. Got a bit tangled up. Yes, I think that the wind didn't help Eli in this love. The switch of sides again. Another switch of sides then. This this is not usual, no, because uh, in the professional tour you cannot receive uh, advice from your coach during the, yeah. the tie break. But here it's another format, another rules. Seven five. And another mistake from Jessica. Now they lost the advantage yeah. of the mini breaks. It's 6 7. Marina, Marina Guinard to serve. Smashed down by Marina Guinard. 
seven all. Great execution on that smash for Marina Ginart. Yes, in a very important moment, Nico. Here we go, 8-7. Yeah. Suddenly, they're alive again. They were 5-0 down in this tie break, and now they lead 8-7. to seven. And again, Nico, we are seeing a roller coaster game. Yeah. Absolutely unpredictable. Difficult to bet. Now it's 8-7 eight, eight, for the Toronto Polar Bears, but Jessica Castillo is serving. Good attack from Eli. You know, saves. Castillo smashes, flip back up by Iglesias. But it stays in. Awkward shot there again. A tad bit of miscommunication. Iglesias finds the hole. Two match points for the Toronto Polar Bears. The first one will be on Castellos serve, the second one will be if needed, on their own service. Wow, beautiful rulo. It was a mix between a rulo and a bibo, Aniko. With a lot of spin. So Victoria Iglesias now has the chance to see off LA. Oh, and they defend the second one as well. Guinard just didn't have the reflexes. So it's 9 all and another switch in sides. How many chances had Toronto to to win this match, you know? Nine all. Victoria Iglesias still has one more serve left. So again, from this point out, whoever wins this point will have a match point. Low lob brought back down by Castillo. Awkwardly held. Then uh, Castillo trying to hit Guinard on the body, who does well to just keep the point Oof. alive. But it's then finished off. By yes, Castillo. So it's match point LA now. And they will have the chance to close the match with their own service. Very aggressive, Jessica. Taking the risk, taking the responsibility to finish that last rally. And now they'll have that match point on their own service. Again, two match points the other way we had earlier in the tie break. Castillo for the win. Saved by Iglesias and out by Yes Castillo. Out by Yes Castillo, so we keep going. Unbelievable. More mystery in this uh, final 
part of the match. Castillo. to the nets from Iglesias now. So another match point, but this time it will be on their opponent's serve. 11-10 in the tie break. Second match point for LA. Yeah, the second match point of the match. Let's see if they can close it here. Good luck from Jessica. Let's see if she... Looks for the Bahala knot. Nice take off the wall from Iglesias. <laughs> and out it goes from Jessica Castillo. <laughs> 11 all. Nobody seems to want to win this match. Yes. Good block from Eli and another match point for LA beat. This time it will be on their own service again. This is it, Nico. This is the third one. Yeah. Second one there on, on their own service. We'd have to think that this is the one. It's now or never. You have to look. They got they get to go for it. Especially Jessica, she has to believe in herself. She's doing a great match, a great comeback. Castillo into the corner of Guinard who Oof. keeps it alive. Amatriain flips it behind the back, attacking Iglesias, now changing directions. Castillo for the win. Jessica Castillo Oof. kept alive by Victoria Iglesias. Amatriain puts up a low lob, attacked by Iglesias, who still wants to win this thing. Castillo resets, brought down by Guinard. Amatriain saw it coming just about again. Iglesias doesn't know when to give up. What a rally, Nico, for this match point. The angle that Castillo tried to open up is covered off by Guinard. And then Victoria Iglesias has the final say. It's 12 all. Yet another match point that goes begging. Unbelievable stuff from the four players here. And Give another switch in sides. Twelve, twelve. We've seen five match points in total in this tie break. Three for LA, two for Toronto. Out. Bob is out. So, fourth match point, LA. Time. 
time. The charm. Through they defend it again. Iglesias, and that is it. It is game, set, and match. The LA Beats come back from behind to take down the Toronto Polar Bears 14-12 in the super tie break. It's 1-0 LA, and that must feel like a very, very hard one to swallow if you're the Toronto Polar Bears. Yes, I think they will have a nightmares uh, today because they were leading all the time. They started the first set, 4 nil. the second one, 3 nil. They have many match points. They were all the time dominating the game. But in the end, you have to close the match, Nico. Yeah. You got to go for the victory, and you don't, if, you does, if you don't go for it, your rival is still alive, and in this case, they got the reward for resisting. Superb victory in the end for LA, who can close this series out now in the next match. It's up to uh, Austin Gomez Silingo and Tolito Aguirre now to close out the series. They take on Javi Barona and Pincho Fernandez in a couple minutes' time. Let's have a look then at the smash of the match brought to you by Adidas. And it is this one from the winning team from LA, Jessica Castillo with a nice finishing touch when uh, she built that point up herself all the way, pulling the trigger on the smash and that's all she wrote. 1-0 then to LA, 1-0 to the beat. And the champions of the of the second event of this PPL 2024 season. Yeah. They got their first victory here in San Diego, in California. The LA Beats are up and running in sunny San Diego at the Barnes Tennis Center. And again, looking to close it out now with uh, Tolito Aguirre and Austin Gomez Silingo. Seeing if uh, the two Argentinians can get it done against the two Spaniards, Pincho Fernandez and Javi Barraona. Let's go courtside, meanwhile, for the winner's interview. Two hours, 15 minutes, just a shade almost at that point. But it wasn't, of course, one that had lacked emotion and ups and downs. It was one filled with excitement throughout. Congratulations to the LA Los Angeles beat as they had a tremendous victory. Gran victoria. Dos horas, quince minutos. Deben de estar exhaustas, pero también hubo mucho, muchos altibajos en, en este partido. You must be exhausted Cuéntame un poco cómo hicieron para after, combatir uh, eso. Two hours and 15 minutes lento, of playing. Pero empezaron y terminaron de manera fenomenal. But you started sí, and finished the match well. Bueno, también fue producto de, well, de las chicas que uh, yeah. al final pues, juegan mucho a esto. Uh, eh, yo le dije a ellos que mi objetivo sport. en un momento era no molestarla demasiado en la pista was, porque uh, <laughs> tenía to, uh, que hacer lo, to lo just que sea, lo básico, bien I hecho. I just had to do the basics right. Hacerlo, y bueno, la verdad I que knew how to do it. Al final yo creo que and tengo end, una jugadora inmensa a mi lado. I have la, uh, la a tremendous player next to me. My idea was just to, to give him my best and to just work hard and let my teammates she has do the rest. Her teammates, everyone that she works with, because basically her job, or she says that her job is just to put the ball over, but she also has a tremendous teammate that helps her a great deal, and, and it makes it much easier for her to be able to do what she does best. So again, it, it ends up being something that is a team effort. Un partido complicadísimo para empezar. Un partido en el cual the match where, where uh, with so many up, ups and downs, how did you feel throughout all of it? It took us a while to get into this match. You have to get used to this court as well. I think also that our rivals started very well indeed. 
y bueno, creo que al final a base de lucha, a base de, de dormir un poco el partido, to, uh, jugar más globos y, y bueno, ya te digo, intentar llevarlo más a, a nuestro terreno, eh, el juego que nos beneficia más a nosotros paddle. y nada, un placer jugar con él y la verdad que, que la calma que Eddie. me da, eh, poca gente lo hace, así que nada, agradecerle. She makes paddle, es un playing paddle a lot easier for me. Más. I'll start Hopefully, backwards because first of all, she gives her team can, uh, a great deal of credit for what she's been able to do. Second of all, it's also a matter of being able to acclimatize themselves. First match coming in, getting familiar with the pit, with, 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 the, with the court, being able to look at, at how the styles are contrasting and how they can come through. They were looking for ways to be able to get through to them, and they finally started figuring things out around the second set or so. So for them, it's a great tribute to be able to do what they were able to do with it in, in this afternoon. So, felicitaciones. Grand debut, así que espero mucho más de ustedes. Okay, suerte. So don't go away. We're going to have much more here in San Diego in the Pro Paddle League. Cool. 